for taking the time to be here. I'm glad you're, you're in a venue that it, it has climate control and you can relax a little bit and enjoy. As this community has proven over and over, the tech community is awesome. We have a chance to try out the newest technologies. We, the decisions we make with some of our products and choices may shape the future for years for literally millions of people. And we get paid well to do it. The innovative ideas that we work on uh, do make a difference. And so let's expand that a little bit to help others. We have a really supportive community. Uh, we have access to bosses and co-workers, even if they aren't in our domain, so we can get things straightened around. Yes, we do have our disagreements. There was one on another slab about M versus BMAC. BMAC, I'm staying out of that. But in general, all of us pull together to get projects completed. Here. We have a support for the larger community, even those that we may not have met in person. Uh, I don't know how many times I've forwarded a message on Twitter that somebody says, hey, I'm looking for a job. You know, would you retreat for reach? Sure. That's great. So we need a little bit more support like that. There are a bunch of people in hard times and they need job leads. And with our reach in the community, we can really help with this. As for me, looking for a job anymore does rather look like this. There are so many choices out there. The landscape of hiring is changing. We have new products coming out. We have companies merging, merging and consolidating. We have really experienced people that are looking for jobs. And some of them don't have to be in tech, which is where I want people to be a little bit more aware. We support the businesses around Uber, uh, our wonderful gallery here, catering companies, the, the people that pick up your groceries at Walmart or deliver your Amazon tech. We need to support that and make sure that they have future employees by just spending a little tiny bit of our social capital and being aware of the opportunities that are out there. Quality is a team effort. Let's prove it. Let's put that in the wider board. Some of the people that are out there, let me know if I fade too much or can't be heard are career changers, like myself, people that have been in a career and have burned out or simply are not interested and not challenged by it anymore. A lot of the new young people are no longer going to college, even though there's a new scheme being proposed to pay for that habit, which I plan on taking it back. <laughs> hey, we have our military people coming back at a slightly increased rate and potentially going out again. So we have small areas that may open and shut quickly. So let's figure out how to get some of these people a job. Maybe try out professions. Talk to you, the places that you have that you know are hiring. See if somebody's interested and able to do job shadow. There, there may be a young person, I'm going to pick on you. you. You have now just graduated from high school, but I think you would be really, really good as a florist. So 
let's see if we can find you a florist where you could job shadow for a couple days if that interests you and see if you loved it as a daily basis. But finding a career that will give you satisfaction and selfishly give us satisfaction of watching someone that was in a bad spot grow and shine and make a career and make something that they are proud of is quite, quite the incentive. But mentoring is a huge time commitment in its traditional sense. Very few of us have the time to sit down for five or six hours a week with one person. So we need to balance that out with shuffling it off on some of the professions that may be out there. Okay, if you decided to do that. So why me? Why are you here listening to me? I've already admitted I'm one of these people that doesn't have the experience. I, I, I've got a little bit of experience, just simply by age, but nothing in the tech world. So look a little deeper. I've been a self-guided learner for um, longer than most of you have been alive. Uh, I've worked on everything from teaching myself uh, Photoshop to learning to code and working with Free Code Camp at CS50 and now finding the fun of going into testing and getting that <laughs> thrill of being able to make sure that what goes out through my hands, everybody's aware of where things may break and the quality is there. So one thing that you do it, as a self-guided learner is you share information. I, I, I want to do this. Okay, I found this tutorial over here. This, this, this might help. And, or uh, there's a program out there for self-guided learners where we can leave resources for somebody that comes along later. And supporting each other. I heard, I heard someone is having much luck with his job search, which makes me happy. And I would love to be able to celebrate him getting a new job. I've been stuck in minimum wage jobs. Uh, working at a truck stop, working fast food. Obviously, I have not become super wealthy doing this, and I don't expect anyone else to. That really feels, those really feel like a trap once you start having enough income to pay the bills. But it also gives you a look at high-level business needs. How many people is it going to take to do this? What types of skills do you need? And things like that. But having bills and an uncertain future never helps. A job offer on, for a path forward, to my regret, some companies use this as a breadcrumb. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you a promotion when you make this. And a little bit of awareness of the businesses and their practices may help avoid that for others. I've got some human resources. Uh, my father and I had a employment agency up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. He worked nationwide getting agriculture people. I was on the phone every day with the local businesses, seeing what they needed. And my quality ideas came in. What do you need? Not what positions are open, what do you need as skills? And trying to find people that match that. And a lot of these people didn't have any clue what skills they had or how to present them. So that was always interesting. My 
background, it, my father was in education, therefore I have taught things constantly since I was in high school. Finding a way to communicate a concept to another person is a skill that is valuable and is something that's fairly easy to teach, at least to me. Uh, so being able to communicate with people at various levels is always something fun. I do have some goals in life and in this talk. Bringing your attention to learning and quality. People can be taught skills, but they have qualities and offer quality already. Their past experiences, their current experiences, their ups and their downs give them a lot of quality that some people don't recognize. And if any of you have dealt with me on Denver Dev Slack, you know I want success for others. That is something that pleases me more than could ever be communicated easily. In the past two years, as I said before, the landscape hiring has changed. College is being skipped or delayed, or a return to college is being put off. The mergers and consolidations and closed businesses have left a lot of very, very qualified people open to new opportunities. And sometimes they don't even know where to look. The minimum wage hike has also changed the landscape a little bit. <clears throat> Wyoming's still at $7.25 for minimum wage. Down here is $11 an hour, and people in Wyoming are going, why are people moving? <laughs> because you can actually live on the salary here. So in addition to moving options, you have the costs that are changing and getting higher, and occasionally needing to stay at home. Maybe working remote is needing to be an option that is having to be looked at, and that was not available easily 10 years ago. <clears throat> the professions that were available even three years ago, have changed. The shift of outlook, some of it climate related, some of it ethics related, Domino's is a good example here. The outlook has changed and it's requiring different skills. <laughs> a lot of the traditional job, area, job search areas are not addressing that yet because it does take a little bit of time to sort that through the, the algorithms. And someone who is changing jobs, they simply have skills that are rusty and need to update them or, well, for my example, I learned Selenium 3 the week before they announced Selenium 4. It's like, <laughs> why did I do this? Okay. This is the current number as of 2018 that are out of work. Nine and a half million people. To give you perspective on that, that's every single person in New York City. There is no one industry, as much as we'd love to, that can absorb that many people. So, we need to look at other options. Okay, there we are. Apologies. So the industry's changing, the outlook on jobs changing, and finding ways to support these people that are looking at a new career or a different or even a different company 
has become prevalent because the person that you're looking for may literally now be one in a million to get the set of skills that you want and the type of person that you need. This is one of the things that you will see as a job seeker. Work hard and dream big. They skipped a few steps in here. <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's a good overall philosophy. There are over 50 types of boot camps and training opportunities out there in the world. This is not including some of the other ones, like plumbing and uh, electric, that offer internships and paid training so someone can come in and make a difference in their family and in their financial future quickly. A, a lot of this does not require experience. Some of them do, some of them offer that training experience, oh, excuse me, which makes it considerably easier on those of us that are looking. As I said before, job shadowing is also an opportunity. I hated being able to offer someone a job that didn't super need it, and then they went in and found out that they hated it. So, so finding opportunities to do some job shadowing may allow people to look at different professions at different levels and see if this is a place where they want to go. There, as I touched on earlier, there are paid trainings in other areas. The military used to be a big source of this. It's become less popular now. But there are still companies out there that maybe not as an official program, but are willing to offer some paid training, webinars or something like that when you get extras that you may not have access to. And you pick up some of the new skills that are available. And with our wonderful community, we connect to a lot of industries. Yeah. Very few people on minimum wage are going to be looking at having someone repaint their front room or walk their dogs. We need to be able to connect, keep an eye on not only the businesses but the people there and see if we can move both of them forward. Some of us have blockers. Many people don't know the skills that they have. They've never been taught to show off those skills or have been discouraged from doing it. Anyone here ever hear, oh, you don't have any skills in that area? <laughs> yeah, we hear that a lot. And having someone out there or prove that, yes, this is a skill that can be valuable is wonderful. Uh, a lack of practice with interviews. How uh, I have had phone interviews and I was terrified for 48 hours beforehand. I've had tech interviews and I was terrified for considerably longer <laughs> than that. So having someone with that is in the industry and is able to take the time and look at your skills and show you, you know, a 10 minute walkthrough on doing a tech interview. Okay, what is your greatest skill? You can take 10 minutes maybe a week with one person and get them through that question, show them how to do their skills, show them how to show their passion and their excitement for the industry and teach them how to find the industry so they, so they know if this is something that interests them. 
And a lot of this doesn't have to be very formal. A casual cup of coffee with someone who is looking for a job, to give them a smile and support and say, yes, you can do this, we believe in you, here's some ideas, is valuable far, far beyond measure. And my mouse to say. Yay. Anyone ever feel like this at a job interview on either side of the table? You have so many people out there. Like I said, there's nine and a half million people, and I'm sure some of you that are doing hiring or volunteering feel like every single one of those applications has crossed your desk within the past couple months. So from this side, so from that side of the table, people don't know their skills. They have no clue how, how to communicate what makes them unique and makes them valuable to a company. They don't take the time to research. Guilty. Uh, they have some of the basic skills are missing, either from lack of practice or simply not knowing what's, what's out there and what's available. And from the other side of the desk, you have isolation. A lot of the self-guided learners are in their own silo. If you're not in a community like this, you're pretty much on your own. As well as, I just got fired. I can't be much use. Or they didn't, they didn't keep me when I changed when the company changed, I feel isolated, you know, maybe not legally allowed to talk to some of your ex co workers. And that really can make a difference in how you interview. The mental health, a lack of confidence, finding the confidence that, yes, I do have that skills, that skill set, and putting the imposter with a cup of coffee and a peanut butter cookie so it can't talk. <laughs> it's really tough. People are unsure of themselves, especially if they've been searching for a while or have gotten fired or are changing careers. It, it, it's a, it's a, the mental health on both sides of the table gets really bad isms. I have one pretty obvious. I'm not exactly the the young fresh out of college, fresh out of high school student that you expect to apply for an internship. One reason I lost it uh, when I applied at Quicken Loans was they didn't allow interns that had graduated more than 18 months ago to stay in the dorms, which is what the program was set up to. So there's a lot of isms out there on both sides of the table. We need to be aware of that and figure out how to address it. Um, let's see. I think I will pick on this young man back here. I, I don't, I, I just have never ever had any luck with an employee that has a beard. Unless it, unless it was like Gandalf. <laughs> In between, they, they just never seem to stay, and they, they don't do the work like I expect. As a, new, as a job seeker, you need to learn to address these things. Turn what you can into positives, and have someone to support you while you're doing it. Because doing it in, in, at your computer is one thing. Doing it in front of a live person is something completely different. There's bias out there. We have, a, we've heard a lot of that recently for various things. But it may also be, I don't want somebody to work remote. I don't. 
if, if you aren't at the office, how can I trust what you're doing? So someone here is seeing that, I can tell. So being able to address those biases in yourself and others. Um, anyone not want to work for Domino's right now because of their refusal to change the application? Yeah, so we have to address that. Is this going to stop me from making a career? Is this going to stop me from making the changes I need to and maybe being influential enough to make the changes in the business. And for all and for all of us, there are too many resources. Anyone recently tried to find a this is how you apply for this type of job that didn't contradict 50 others out there? You have someone since he's here, and I could have gone him earlier, at Quizzle, you talk to one person in the company, they go, yes, I'd really love to have you here. I think you'd be great. And you talk to somebody else, and they're like, why are you leaving the plane? So there's resources out there. Be selective of them. Take what Mr. Betts over here it advocates. Use the history company and read about it, read about the people, and find where you fit. All right, running a little bit quick. Fortunately, I don't sound like a chipmunk on helium. <laughs> but these are, these are my takeaways. Stay aware of opportunities. Find p businesses that you associate with, and people that you associate with, and see if you can make something more forward for them. A very easy social capital to spend. Retweet, retweet or Facebook share somebody saying, I, I'm looking for a job, or my wife's looking for a job, or whatever. That's a very easy way to maybe bring someone that's good into attention. If you're going to help somebody, budget the time for one person. You can spend a half hour a week, maybe an hour, a couple, couple cups of coffee, and spend the time getting them focused on their job, focused on their career, and get them, get that excitement that you see as a casual person to carry across to an interview. One thing I am spoiled on with this community is the next one, encouragement. There have been days that I want, wanted to give up and go crawl under the mattress, but on here there's a message from someone or a question that I could actually help with. That is so valuable. I, re I still can remember the thrill of the first time I was able to answer a question that somebody had about something I was learning. And also recognize the factors that may block and show people how to get around the, the, It may be on the company side, it may be on the personal side. This is, it really is an easy task, being able to share ourselves, our resources, and our network with others. Hi. Right. All right, any questions? Anyone I should have picked on, but I can <laughs> Yes. Um, so I'm talking about the boundaries and talking about isolation. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any suggestions? Or like, have you experienced that, like, what? I, 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 live, I live in the silo called Wyoming. Yes, I have it. Yes, I, I have isolation. A lot of what it comes down to is being able and being courageous enough to ask. Getting someone who 
uh, well, I'm still waiting on a response for my how do you use Jess to test this question, but being able to go into the community, go into the research, ask the people that are maintaining the documentation, um, finding those things, plus going out and um, I was out for lunch the other day at a fast food place and met the gentleman that's running the new uh, array school of technology. So expect, expand your community a little bit. You, you do get the chance to do it. You just need to make sure that you take, you take those chances. And having a good community is so much fun to build uh, because not only do you have people that have already succeeded, you get to watch others grow. Anyone else? Just you had a break room? I was going to say that I work for the U.S. Geological Survey, and, mm -hmm. and there's some hiring practice we have that can't be challenging to find. Like, we can't go on the streets and hire a boot camp graduate. Um, things need to be advertised and there's different preferences. So, I don't know, maybe for job seekers, especially veterans, kind of federal agencies are, yeah. a, are a way forward. And there's not much we could do on a personal way because it's so systematic, but... Um, okay, a couple things there. Have you... If you know of some place, this is one, that a lot of the people that you may want to hire are, be there. Let somebody that's going, I, I, have, I need a job, I don't know where to start, say, hey, you know, we've got this. If you, don't, if you don't fit in it, let somebody else know. Also, uh, that is a tough area to get into. I admire you much, much for trying to, to fill positions with that. Uh, maybe volunteer places. Uh, yeah, and I know you do that, but some of these people may not. Uh, and I know the local conservation district of Cheyenne would make sure somebody called in and they were having a tough time saying, hey, you know, this place, this place is looking. Would you want to consider that? So, you are an expert at using resources. I admire you so much for that. Yes? One of the things, too, is that we actually all work for a boutique IT staffing firm. So, another one of the things, kind of your name out there, is just having updated LinkedIn with having actual experience underneath a detailed description of your experience. So when we go and we search for candidates, we want to see that you have like what you did in each role, not just what your title was. Yeah. So that's and, a good way to do that. But that also for some of these attractive folk here may turn around and fight. Yeah. 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 If if you can maybe minimize it on your on your last role, maybe last two roles and then expand into it, yeah, that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. I, I personally am bludgeoning my GitHub portfolio <laughs> into something that looks a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> so, anybody else? Anyone want to contribute? Experiences? I'll be happy to try to pass the microphone if you do. Anything that wasn't clear, needs expounded on? Okay. Then I guess I get to be teacher and say, okay, everybody out for lunch. <laughs> <laughs>